Okay, so in this video, we want to find the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals 2x and y equals x squared. So let us first find the points of intersection. So we equate x squared to 2x, subtract 2x on both sides, and now it becomes a simple factoring problem. Factor x. So the solutions are clearly x equals 0 and x equals 2. So now we have the x coordinates of our points of intersection. Well, to find the y coordinates, you can use either curve. So 2x, so 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. And you can verify that these are accurate as they should be solutions to both curves. So let's try with the second curve. 0 squared is 0, 2 squared is 4. So a simple way to check that you have found the correct points of intersection. And now we can accurately, accurately sketch the region bounded by these two curves given these two points of intersection. So y equals x squared, and y equals 2x. So the first point of intersection, 0, 0, so obviously the origin. And the second point of intersection, x equals 2, y equals 4. So now we have the region, and if you remember the idea in finding the area of this region, or any region, is to cover up the area, the region, with infinitesimal rectangles. So for this problem, we will use a set of vertical rectangles. So we take a very thin vertical rectangle, and it has to be a generic rectangle, as we will then move this rectangle across the region left to right, and if we cover up the region with these infinitesimal rectangles, when then we add the area of all of these small rectangles, we will obtain the exact area of the region. So, as we have a generic rectangle, it is positioned clearly along the x-axis, and because it is again a generic rectangle, it is positioned along an arbitrary x value, so its position is quite simply x. Now the width of the rectangle is a very short segment along the x-axis. So the width of our rectangle is an infinitesimal change in x, and this is of course what we call dx. And again, I want to emphasize this, dx is not a constant change in x, it is a change in x that approaches zero only by letting the width of the rectangles become smaller and smaller and smaller can we then obtain the exact area of the region. So now we have the position of our rectangle, the width of our rectangle, all we're missing is the height of the rectangle. Well if you notice, since the width is dx, everything we measure will have to be a function of x. Now the length of the rectangle is clearly a line segment along the y-axis, so we need the larger y-value and the smaller y-value. Well at this point, we clearly are on the line where y is equal to 2x. At the lower end point of our rectangle, we clearly are on the parabola where y is equal to x squared. So in terms of x, the larger y value is 2x, the smaller y value is x squared. So when you want the length of a segment, of course, you do larger value minus the smaller value. And now we're essentially done. The area of the rectangle is, of course, the height times the width. The height is 2x minus x squared.
and the width is dx. So if you have the height of the rectangle times its width, this then corresponds to the area of our small rectangle. But of course the area of this infinitesimal rectangle is not the entire area of the region. To obtain the exact area of this region we have to sum the area of all of these infinitesimal rectangles from where to where. Well we're summing with respect to x, of course since our rectangles are positioned along the x-axis. So if you move your rectangles left and right of this region to cover up the region, well where do they begin? They begin of course at the origin where x is 0 and they go all the way up to the right hand point where x equals 2. So if you sum the area of all these infinitesimal rectangles from 0 to 2, you will cover up the region entirely with these infinitesimal rectangles and of course the result will return the exact area of the region. And now of course we have two options. We need to evaluate this definite integral either using Riemann sums or the fundamental theorem of calculus. We will of course go with the second option as it is much more efficient. So first we find an antiderivative 2, 2x minus x squared power rule x squared minus x3 over 3 and as always if you differentiate this function you will obtain 2x minus x squared and we evaluate from 0 to 2 so first plug in 2 for x so you'll get 2 squared is 4 minus 2 cubed is 8 so 8 thirds minus the antiderivative when x is 0 but if you replace x by 0 the result is simply 0 so we're left with 4 minus 8 thirds if we put everything over 3, this is 12 over 3 minus 8 over 3, which of course is simply 4 thirds. So the exact area of the region in the xy plane bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 2x is 4 over 3. And that's it.